What's going on everybody? Got another video for you. This video is composition of functions, composite functions, but I'll, I'll explain a little bit of how we find the composition of the function, but the main focus of this video is finding the domain of this thing. Students tend to struggle with this, so let's we, let's work some problems and I'll explain to you how to find the domain. Uh, we got three problems to work. So here it says the domain of the composite function f circle g is the set of all x such that x is in the domain of g and g of x is in the domain of f. All right. So, you know, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but let me explain it to you and hopefully it will after this video. So we, we got, like I said, three problems to work. So let's look at this. So for the following, find A, the composition of the two functions, and then the domain. So let's find the composition first. So we've got F circle G of X is equal to, now remember, this is F of g of x okay that's the that's the definition of it that's what this means this means this so what we're going to do is we're going to take this one over x here okay say so look f of g of x well what is g of x g of x is one over x so that's f of one over x all right now let's just say for instance, let's come over here to the side. Forget about this problem for right now. What if they wanted us to find f of 5? What would we do? Well, we would take the 5 and we would put it in the place of x right here. So that would be 5 plus 3, all right? Which would be 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth, all right? So basically what we're doing, this, this term right here, inside the parentheses that gets put in the place of x so that's exactly what we're doing here we're going to take this one over x here and we're going to plug it into that x there and so this is going to be two over now in the place of x we're going to put one over x so that's one over x plus three all right and then if we simplify this that's going to be well, what is it going to be? That's over 1. That's over 1. It's like we're simplifying a complex fraction. We're going to multiply each term by x. Because, see, if you look at this denominator, this denominator, and this denominator, that common denominator is x. So we're going to multiply 2 times x over 1 over x times x plus 3 times x, which that's 2x over 1 plus 3x. And so this is your answer to part A. Now, let's look at part B, the domain. All right, so remember what it says. It says x is in the domain of g. All right, so let's look at g. g is 1 over x. So we know for g of x, x cannot equal, I'm sorry, not 1, x cannot equal 0, because that would make g undefined. All right? Now, let's look at this next part. It says g of x is in the domain of f. Okay, g of x is in the domain of f. So what are we, what, what are we doing? We're taking the 1 over x, and we're putting it in the place of x. So what we have is 2 over 1 over x plus 3. All right? Now, let's, let's, let's take a look at this real quick. All right. So remember, it says g of x is in the domain of f. Now, what do we know? What do we know about this function right here? We know that 
the denominator cannot be zero. So x plus three, it cannot equal zero. And when does this equal zero? Well, it equals zero when x is negative three. Okay, right? If x, if this x were negative three, then that would be undefined. So that means that this part right here, this one over x, we need to see when does this equal negative three. So if we take one over x and set it equal to negative three and we, and we solve it, well, we're going to multiply both sides by x. And so that gives us one equals negative three x. So x equals negative one third. All right. So for this problem, x cannot be zero because that makes g of x undefined and x cannot be negative one third because that would make f undefined. And so x cannot be negative one third. So what is our domain? Our domain is everything but negative one third and zero. And look, I think the easiest way to write out the domain is just take a look at it on the number line. So we've got negative one third and we've got zero. And the domain is the entire number line except for negative one third and zero. So our domain is from negative infinity to negative one third and we put a parenthesis because the negative one third is not included or it's everything between negative one third and zero so everything between negative one third and zero or everything from zero to infinity zero to infinity and this is your answer all right all right, let's take a look at the next problem. So we've got f of x equals the square root of x, and g of x is equal to x minus 2. So let's look at part a. We want to do f circle g of x is equal to f of g of x. All right, and so that's equal to f of, well, What's g of x? g of x is x minus 2. And so now we're going to take the x minus 2 and put it in the place of that x. And so we get the square root of x minus 2. All right. Now, for part, now that, that's the answer to the part A. Now, part B, we need the domain. All right. So first, let's look at the domain of g of x. What's the domain of g of x? Well, it's, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. x minus 2, we can plug anything we want in for x. That's just a linear function there. It doesn't matter what x is. Okay. So there's no restrictions there on what we can plug in for x in our g function. But now let's look at this one right here. Well, for this one, well, we have a square root of x minus 2, and we know we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So x minus 2, well, if it can't be negative, that means it has to be positive, right? So x minus 2 has to be greater than 0. See, what, what we're saying here is... Okay, this part here underneath the radical has to be positive. See, it has to be positive. Now, let me ask you this. Can it equal zero? Well, sure, we can take the square root of zero. The square root of zero is zero. So that means it, it has to be positive or it can equal zero. And then if we solve this, we get x is greater than or equal to two. And so there's your domain. 
So the domain is 2 to infinity. See, we're just looking at this right now for the domain because for g of x, x can be anything. So we just had to worry about this part underneath the radical, underneath the square root. All right, last problem. So let's look at part A. We want to do f of circle g of x is equal to f of g of x, which is f of square root of 1 minus x. Okay, so see g of x is square root of 1 minus x. That's where that comes from. And so now we're going to take the square root of 1 minus x and we're going to put it in the place of x. And so this is the square root 1 minus x. That's what I put in the place of x. And then that's squared plus 4. And so this is equal to 1 minus x plus 4, which is equal to 5 minus x. And so there's your answer to part A. All right. Now let's look at part B. All right, we've got g of x here. Well, what do we know about this? Well, just like in the previous problem, we can't have we can't take the square root of a negative number. So we know 1 minus x has to be positive, so it has to be greater than 0, but it can also equal 0. And so if we solve for x, we'll add x to both sides, so we get 1 is greater than or equal to x. All right? So basically what this is saying is that x is less than or equal to 1. You see that? All right, so that's, we get that from looking at the domain of g. All right, now let's come over here to f, to the f circle g of x. So let's look at this. Are there any restrictions on this 5 minus x? No, we can, th there's no restrictions here. 5 minus x, we can really, we can actually plug anything we want in for x. Okay, but it's restricted, but the values that we can plug in for x, it's restricted to x being less than or equal to 1 because of our function g. And so our domain is is negative infinity to 1. So there's your domain. So, so that's three different examples. I hope the three different examples, it gives you an idea of what you're doing. So basically what you're doing, you're looking and you're saying, okay, what's the, what's the domain of G? Okay, we're looking at that first. What's the domain of G? And so we, we find that. And then we have to look at this, okay, and see what the domain of that is. See, it, it didn't really affect, it didn't affect this one, okay, because we could plug anything we wanted into for x here, into f circle g of x. But because of g of x, that restricted the values from negative, negative infinity to 1. But up here, we could plug anything we wanted in for G. But then when we looked at the composition, the composite function, well, we have a square root. So that determined our domain there. And then in this one up here, actually both of them affected our domain. Because for G, we knew X couldn't be 0. And then for our, for our final answer, this 1 over x here, see when you take the g of x and you plug, plug the 1 over x in, let me write it again up here. So, so when you take this and you plug it in for x, well, see that's replacing the x, so we know this can't be negative 3. Yes, you could take this and set it equal to 0 and solve for x and get it, but I wanted you to see that that it's because of the g of x is 1 over x, and this cannot be negative 3. Okay? So, 
So there's how you find the domain of, a, of composite functions, and I hope this video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.